Are you ready, kids? No? Well, okay. Anyway, Spongebob games. Ah, Spongebob Squarepants, one of the last 90s show there is and also one of the only hand-drawn cartoons left. I don't know how it became such a success, but I love the show and decide to dedicate some time to talk about the great and maybe not so great Spongebob video games. Today, we'll be taking a look at some movie type Spongebob video games. Or video games based on certain Spongebob movies, since more or less all Spongebob video games are movie type in some way, right? You know what, let's just move on. First off, let's take a look at the always famous Atlantis Square Panthers. Yeah, this one is rather true to the movie, since the movie didn't live up to any expectations at all. And I can assure you, this video game doesn't either. And that's pretty damn bad, since none of us had any expectations. Let's put it in and start it up. As always, we're greeted by THQ, who have been making all of these cartoon-based video games. Well... Except for Robotic Revenge on Wii U, PS3 and Xbox 360, which was made by Activision. You all know why. May they rest in peace. The first thing to notice is that Spongebob actually looks rather creepy, but the title says press A and B to continue, so let's do that. You can navigate the menu either with the D-pad or the sensor bar, so whatever you prefer, I guess. Upon entering the game, we can already see that there's only 14 stages, which, well, is a lot, especially for a game meant to cash in on a terrible movie. Okay, stage 1, Tanglantis Plank Panthers. Well, that's a great name, right? Upon entering the stage, we're greeted by, well, great cell shaded graphics for a kid's game. SpongeBob and Gang running for their lives from the Atlanteans. Okay? Last time I checked this movie, which I have seen five times by now, Sadly enough, this part is almost at the ending. Are you telling me that the video game is almost over? As in, over before it began? I hope so. Cower before me, fools! How did SpongeBob's trip to Atlantis end this way? What? They decided to show the end? Because the end is the best part? The hell, man? I know the ending is the best part, since you only know there's a few minutes left of this god-awful movie! But then again, I mean... You know what? Let's just see what they're going for, okay? I mean, it can't be all that bad. Also, Creepy Bob is back. He's telling us how to control the ice cream tank. One note, the instructions forgot to mention that pressing up on the D-pad makes the tank move as well. It's not a big deal, really. I mean, you'll figure that out in seconds. But it's just that they forgot that small part but remembered everything else in the instruction guide. This stage is pretty much a shoot em up in a tank. What I don't get though is that you have to destroy the armory. I mean, Plankton is a war freak. Why would he destroy massive weapons? Basically, you get to destroy a bigger tank in yours going around Atlantis blasting everything in your way. Beating up other tanks gives you bonus time, yeah, it's time based, as in do it as quickly as you can. So, made it to the end, but what the hell? No tanks left, but still a barrier, what the hell? Okay, get this, you have to shoot these poles in order to spawn the enemies. Seriously? That is what you have to do? Imagine in Mario, the only way to get enemies in a stage is to push a big fucking button at the start. Okay, I did it and I got... Oh, it's based on score. Well, that's great. Outside of Atari, does anyone really care anymore? Next up, Amulet Adventure. And now the game follows the movie, as far as it now does. So, this is basically an overhead puzzle, which is more boring than fun. It reminds me of that D mouse game on Game Boy. Oh, you never heard of it? Well, that's too bad since that is the only game that I know of that slightly resembles this part. Maybe there are others like that, but who cares? The stage is rather simple and quite like the movie. Are you telling me you don't remember the new and improved Director's Cut Edition? With ghosts Whoa. everywhere, Patrick picking up Spongebob, rotating like a drunk bastard and then throwing his friend into the abyss. Yeah, that version. What the fuck were they thinking? I get it, you have to make more out of it in order to get a playable game. But my complaints here are simple. First off, ghosts. And to top it off, multiple flying Dutchmans. Or is it Dutchmen? I mean, come on, why couldn't it be those cave dwellers from that episode where Plankton undermines the competition and ends up finding that underground cave? It would make no sense, but it would be a tiny better nod than just a bunch of Dutchman replicas. 
Second, the controls aren't good per se, not terrible, just some weird choices. I mean, a nunchuck would have been highly appreciated. You know, on some consoles like the 360, the GameCube, and to some extent, the Wii. The D-pad aren't really good for these kind of games. I mean, the PlayStation controller is fine, the D-pad is nice and really usable, but these other consoles just doesn't have that feel. And when you pick up Spongebob, Patrick spins in a circle until you press the throw button again. He won't stop otherwise. Oh yeah, by the way, you have to control both Patrick and Spongebob separately. And no, there are no multiplayer in this section, what did you expect? Meaning, if there is a drop, you have to get Patrick over there, then Spongebob, then throw Spongebob over to the other side so Patrick can proceed. Not incredibly terrible, just really monotonous. I get it, it is a puzzle, but really, couldn't one follow the other or something? Besides, throwing your friend over a cliff because you're too lazy to jump it? That's hardly a puzzle. Spongebob has the ability to open gates with his spatula and roll these weird six-sided things to make Patrick follow him. Also worth knowing, this section is divided by five smaller areas, making it rather boring to beat. I mean, after two areas, you are pumped out by the lack of intelligent puzzles. Okay, that is how it's done. Now let's move on. This must belong to your ancient ancestors. Let's take it to the Bikini Bottom Museum. Next up is Snap Happy, basically a photo shoot hunt through the museum. Before we begin, let's take a look at the controls. You have to shake your Wii remote to reload your stale patties. Remember, shaken, not stirred. Also, for what it's worth, they call them stale patties since we all know Spongebob would never hurt a fresh patty. Oh baby. Hell, he wouldn't even hurt a rotten patty. But let's be honest here, we all pretend that, that episode never happened. Basically, it's your typical railroad shooter with a bit of Pokemon Snap in there. Just face it, people. This is the closest we'll ever get to a second game. This stage is rather simple. Shoot the pointed out places and throw patties at guards and other people. I have to admit, as boring as these railroad shooters are, outside of the arcade of course, there's a lot of neat little things in this. For instance, the monster from the movie is portrayed. The Alaskan bollworm is mounted on the wall. There's a rather creepy picture of SpongeBob. I have no idea where it's from. Even SpongeGar and Patark made a cameo. Okay, the next stage. Wait a minute. They misplaced Patrick and Squidward's house? Okay, man. Instant hate. No matter what they throw at me, this is the part I'll remember the game by. I wish this was some kind of game that I could play over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Trust me, SpongeBob, you're the only one who thinks that. Might be worth mentioning, as you progress through the shootout, don't hit the vases or let other people photograph you. Both is resulting in losing points. And how else would you be getting that gold medal you really don't care about? As we progress through the stage, you'll notice something rather odd. Yeah. And that is a dig in plain sight. Anyway, done with this level, and silver again. Next up is Magical Musical Journey. I know what you're all thinking, and yeah, it's what you think it is. A stupid QTE with none of the songs from the movie. So, basically, it's an improvement. While being incredibly stupid. And also, this is basically the game. The rest is just a repeat of these four stages. We got the Atlantean Walk, which is a QT event again. We have the bus driving scene, which is really similar to Plankton's tank game minus the shooting of ice cream. Mr. Krabs money crabbing. It's a good joke really. Which is basically a railroad shooter again like the photo shoot, just with a money grabbing gun this time. And then we got Squidward posing for art school. Because that was necessary. Which is similar to the other QTE events, except it's reversed. Instead of having to press the buttons at the right time, you have a certain amount of time to press all the buttons shown. So, at least there is some variety. Yet another photo shoot, this time with Patrick. And yet another puzzle solver overhead. You know, we need a better name for this. Well, how about Bird Perspective Shit Puzzler? Yeah, that's good. This time in the bird perspective shit puzzler, we at least got more characters, still limited to two characters per segment though. Which is good because we'd be here all day if they included that many different puzzles. All five of them. Seriously, 
What's a challenge too much to ask for? I got one major complaint though, in the crabs and sandy stage. It's just stupid. It's nothing big, but this part is not self-explanatory. Maybe it's just me who's stupid, but it's really weird. You see, I had to get a move on, but the game really didn't give me a clear indication of where to go. I thought that I had to get in here, but in reality, I had to go down there. Also, when you beat a stage in this level, you are greeted to a really dumb Scooby-Doo chase scene with the worst music imaginable. Anyway, next level is another QTE with Plankton. I have no idea why. The other stages at least gave you a reason for being QTE. One is to follow the non-existent music and the other was to strike a dazzling pose. You know what? QTE fucking sucks. And then, yet another railroad shooter. I must admit that this one is okay-ish. Maybe it's because of the lack of fun from the rest of the game, but this was rather fun. Shooting marbles out of Squidward, seeing Chick's face in the helmet, it was... Well... Kind of fun, I guess. Oh, and also a side note, you can unlock stuff in the game, and in order to get everything, you have to beat the levels on gold, silver and bronze. You don't automatically unlock bronze if you get silver. No, you have to beat all levels on all scores to unlock all extras. It is really bad game design, imagine and say... Mario. If you had to beat the level on 100 seconds, 200 seconds and 300 seconds left, just to see that the princess is in another castle. And then we finally have a long and boring tank fight with Plankton. Who still doesn't get that the tank is an ice cream shooter? He battled through the entire Atlantean army. You would think that by now he realized it was an ice cream dispenser. Oh, and you might be thinking, that's only 13 levels. And you're right on that one. The last level is credits. I'm dead serious. It's a stupid QTE event through the credits. I don't care much for credits in general, but making it into a stage is just stupid. I mean, add the skip button instead and spare us from all those names, man. So that was Atlantis Square Pandas the musical the game. And my final verdict for this... I rated 5 out of 10. Why 5? Well, it's like the biggest number I know. Exactly. Moving on. It's boring and dull and even worse. It's an insult to the intellect of children. Next up is Spongebob Squarepants True for Square. And I know what you're thinking. That weird, rather stale, overly advertised episode that's basically just a fake flashback episode got a game? And the answer... is yes. It actually seems to be a theme here. Spongebob gets a long episode or movie to TV special. It's way too advertised for its own good. And it gets a game. Well, let's put it in and check it out. I'm using my Wii U because I bought it. And heaven knows, when you bought one, you were itching to use it. As soon as you press the icon, Spongebob laughs at you. Ah! <laughs> well, ain't that fun, kids? The game is like always created by THQ and Heavy Iron, who really made the majority of cartoon games back in the 2000s. This video game also includes a tutorial on the Wii Mode Plus functions, if you didn't know how to use one, that is. The game starts with Spongebob being overly excited by the Krusty Krabs 1170 anniversary. Oh, Gary! I'm so excited! I can't believe tomorrow is the 1177th anniversary of the Krusty Krab! Yeah, you know, that incredibly weird episode where nothing happens and all of the flashbacks are actually new clips? In all honesty... This is probably one of the better bottle episodes ever made. Anyway. Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob to keep the secret formula safe until the anniversary, and of course, like true Spongebob manner, he forgets where it is. Oh no! Patrick! Where did I put the formula? I can't remember! And that's the game. Yeah, so you as the player has to help Spongebob remember where he put the secret formula. Don't worry, it's more exciting than it sounds. For instance, Spongebob has developed a disease that makes him forget even more stuff when he is sad. And losing the formula and on that accord about to lose his job makes Spongebob a really sad sponge. I'm sad! And when I'm sad, I can't remember anything! So that's the point of the game. Spongebob has to remember the good old times, you know, when he was a happy sponge. I am a happy sponge! And to be honest, just by looking at this game, you can clearly see that they put a lot of effort into the facial animation of the characters. Unlike, say, Atlantis Square Pantis, where everyone just keeps smiling away. 
After a little while, Plankton decides to help SpongeBob retrieve the lost memory through his wicked machines. Okay, change of plans. I will now enter SpongeBob's brain and find the formula myself. And like true stupid SpongeBob style, SpongeBob has no clue of Plankton's ulterior motives. And now the game finally starts. The first stage is where Patrick and SpongeBob went jellyfishing together. And according to the wiki, this level is based on the following episodes. Jellyfishing, Jellyfish Honda and Jellyfish Jam. It might be worth mentioning that you can use either the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. The Pro Classic, even a GameCube controller is usable. But in my opinion, the Pro Classic controller is the best option there is, simply because of the button layout. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, but the GameCube controller is the best controller in the entire world. Surely you can't be serious. And I agree, it's one of the best controllers out there. So good that they made an unofficial Wii port. But my reasons for this is very simple. On the classic controller you use the Y button to hit stuff with and the X button to use the propeller attack. And it's the same on the GameCube, only difference, the X and Y buttons are differently placed. Making it more difficult to use. And to make it worse, the B button is used for the cannon attack. And you're probably thinking, what does any of this has to do with bad layout? And that's a good question. You see, the spatula attack aka the Y button. It's your most common attack and the only one you start out with. And when you want to hit something, you instantly think of pressing the B button on the GameCube since most games are programmed that way. A great example is Wind Waker. Imagine if you used the Y button to use the sword and the B button was only for bombs. Anyway, it's not the worst, it's just... uncommon, that's all. I myself decided to use the classic controller for the majority of the game. As we begin the stage, you see all these plankton-like boxes, smash them open to get coins. And you use coins for various things, which we'll look at later. The stage features Patrick's being captured or hiding, not really sure which, and Spongebob having to find him. Sort of like the episode Hide and then what happens. My name is Patrick. Patrick, not Star. Upon playing the game, you'll get to see different enemies, although this game suffers the same bullshit like many other games have. Different colors mean stronger enemies. Yeah, it's a common trick in the video game industry to make the game more diverse without doing anything at all. It's sad and it's boring and let's get a move on. Once you proceed in the stage, you'll stumble upon these boxes. Oh, don't you talk about my boxes! I like boxes! Sure you do, but these are not to the idiot box episode. And trust me, this video game is loaded with references. It even has buff pants. Yeah, that's how dedicated the game is. At the end of the stage, you'll stumble upon what can only be referred to as Sponge Henge, where you have your first major battle. Major might be such a big word for this, but nevertheless, it's a lot of enemies. 25 enemies, and before you start, you can collect this little token heavily inspired by the classic Mario game. Why do I say that? It's just a feeling. Finally, we're done with the first stage, and we get our first memory. Yeah, you have to collect happy memories to proceed in the game. Don't worry, it's not like Mario. One memory equals the next stage. So basically, just complete a stage to move on to the next one. The next episode is based on the tea at the tree dome and Club Spongebob apparently. Yeah, apparently they are mixing Spongebob's meeting with Sandy with Bear Grylls. I mean, it works. But in all honesty, there's a lot of better matches in <laughs> this mix-up. In this stage, we get introduced to the propeller, which we have to use to get across too big to jump gaps and this pinwheel thing. Notable enough, some of these puzzles can only be solved by using buff pants power up, which I forgot to mention before, you lose it if you get hit once. Sort of like old school smug games. As we progress through the level, we'll stumble upon these weird clouds on the ground. I know it's flowers, but come on, they look like Spongebob clouds. They all look like flowers, Spongebob. All the time. It turns out they are man-eating plants, or sponge-eating in this case. You have to use the Sandy Cheeks power-up conveniently placed next to the whole batch to whip them up with karate. And finally, we get to the end of the stage, notably the stages are about 20 minutes each. Can be done faster and slower depending on your way of playing of course. At the end there's a mini boss sort of like first stage, but instead of a lot of enemies it's one tough one. So basically you just have to wait until it's worn out and hit it. No brain really, a nice little taste on the next actual boss. Next stage, Squidward Stance Show, only on DS and PSP. Yeah, because that's fucking nice, why not keep some stages out of the home console? Remember when the handheld games were the small ones? In this scenario, it's the complete opposite! 
Anyway, the next stage is based on no weenus allowed, more specifically the scene where Spongebob and Patrick fights. You're going down, Tubby. And since this is the dream world, yeah, remember that we are still in there. Plankton's robot takes over the fight with a giant robot Patrick, and the mechanics are the same as the miniboss in previous stage. After you beat the robot Patrick, you get a... Wait, what? Hot dog? What? Is this based on the Krusty Dog episode? Oh wait, of course, it's based on the Super Weenie Hot Jr. Oh, of course, my mistake. Then we got the level becoming the Fry Cook, based on the pilot episode, Help Wanted. I might say that this is a nifty little nod to the origin of Spongebob. A few minor tweaks, such as the level takes place in the jellyfish fields, but then again, a whole stage inside the Krusty Krab wouldn't be too much fun, I guess. A little detail I noticed while playing through this level is that you really don't feel the anchovies, I mean, just listen to the game sound. And now listen to the pilot episode. Two completely different things, right? I would have loved if they had kept in the original sound effect, you know, for nostalgia, but oh well. At least the level ends near the bargain mine, like the episode. Sort of. Next up, Santa, Santa, Santa. While you are figuring out the first episode is based on, the second one is Survivor of the Idiots. Oddly enough, this level takes place within the Krusty Krab Freezer. I know! Weird! I just said that an episode inside the Krusty Krab wouldn't be too fun. Anyway, as you make your way through the level, we'll see Squidward portraying as Santa in various different locations. Even one with this kid who got a present. The reason why I bring her up is, she's the only character in the game that's not killable or interactable. Including a few others in the stage, of course. But honestly, I know what they went for, but usually when you see characters in this game, they are usually out of reach. In this stage, we introduce to the bombs. <laughs> yeah, you hit them on the head. Don't try that in real life, okay? And then jump onto them, rolling them in place. An equivalent to theirs would be Glove on the 64. There is also these gum related puzzles, well I use that term loosely, you basically have to aim at the next piece of gum and press the right button. And you might think, is that a really clever reference to the episode Gift of Gum? And yes it is. Then we get to the mini boss of the stage, a robot with meat pounders for hands. Not too difficult, avoid his attacks until he's vulnerable, note if you get hit, the cycle resets. Brutal? Yes. Dark Souls brutal? Hell no. Next episode is solely based on the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, the first episode. Which is already a spoof of the 1960s Batman show with the best Bruce Wayne of all time, Adam West. Well, not much to say other than some simple jumping puzzles and one funny line. I just thought it was really funny, I mean at first I really did believe that the creators had no idea what they were talking about. You know like those guys who make toys who really doesn't give a shit about the story behind the toys and we end up with Super Batman, or those Ghostbusters toys that never did make it to the show. Yeah but no, they actually know their shit. Next up is probably the best one yet as well as the worst one. It's a boss battle against Krabby Patty loving Squidward. Okay the pros is, well. With Squidward's thighs. No, seriously, of all the boss battles in this game, this one is the most memorable. It's based on the episode Just One Bite and you can clearly see why. The boss battle is simple enough, make your way to the platform and beat Robo Squidward in a game of peekaboo. Yeah, that's basically it. What is great about this is simply the attention to detail, the fact that Squidward actually attempts to hide his face from you. The fact that the more you beat him, the more patties he eats and the bigger the fight gets. The cons, it reminds me a lot about the Egg Golem from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And let's be honest, that battle is not good at all. That's no good. Yeah, a Sonic Adventure 2 Battle might be one of the most popular Sonic games out there, and for good reasons, it's a fun game. But outside of City Escape, what stages do you really like? Maybe the White Jungle, maybe the Bridge? But apart from those stages, there's really not a lot to it. And the bosses? Oh my! Sidetracked again. Next up is 24 hours at the Krusty Krab. Based on, well, the night shift and rock bottom really. As mentioned before, an entire stage in the Krusty Krab probably couldn't work in a game like this. 
Unless you made it like really big with pitfalls and all that and that wouldn't really do the franchise justice. I'm still not too keen on the freezer level, so instead it takes place in rock bottom. You have to gum your way inside a giant monster and along the way Squidward tells you all about the hash slinging slasher. There are si signal the approach of a hash slinging slasher. First, the phone will ring. And let me tell you, there is a lot of eerie and sort of spooky stuff in this stage. If you are a kid, of course. Once I managed to beat all the robots and proceeded, I got greeted to... Oh shit! And then along the way... Really? Out of all the sea dwellers in the entire world, they had to use that creepy eel from Super Mario 64? Seriously, that eel still haunts me. As you progress through the level, Squidward talks more and more about the hash slinging slasher until... Oh my. This shit is real now. The shadow of a slasher! I think I just inked in my pants. Next is Karate with Sandy, a mix of Karate Island and Karate Choppers. I must say for a game about True for Square, they really have zero things in common. True, both are based on flashbacks and they both borrow from previous successes. Anyway, the Karate Island ends with yet another mini-boss, this time a rotating fucker who doesn't cut you any slack. I mean, he's constantly at you. Luckily, you can deflect his balls. The next stage is Ambush at the Krusty Krab. And you might be wondering why I have no footage of this stage. Well, that is because it's PSP only. Yeah, you go try find PSP games outside of Japan nowadays. <laughs> Fucking impossible. Instead, let me show a sped up version of Spongebob getting old. And that is awesome as hell. Anyway, now we are at the final stage, simply named That Is Not Your Formula Plankton. Rolls right off the tongue. To be honest, it's sort of a letdown, big surprise, Plankton just used Spongebob to get the location of the formula. And we now have a giant robot battle, where Spongebob has to defeat it in various different ways, and by that I mean hit the eye with gum when you can. You enter a small battle arena inside the robot until you beat what I assume is the heart. Yeah, and it ends with Spongebob confronting Mr. Krabs about the missing formula and it turns out that Krabs had it all along. Hey, that's me lottery ticket! Oops, I guess I never gave you the formula after all. <laughs> I mean, similar plots has been used before in Spongebob, but oh well. In general, I like the game. Is it good? No, it's mediocre. I would say, had it not been for all the cameos, easter eggs and references, I would say it's downright dull and boring. There is nothing special to make it stand out. The gameplay is, well, mediocre. It adds nothing new. The stages can be rather bland and mindless apart from the references, which in all honesty, is what kept me going through the game. A better puzzle platformer would probably be Mario, Crash Bandicoot or even Reginald Clank. But in all fairness, I would highly recommend you to play this game just to see how much care they put into everything surrounding Spongebob. I'm the Angry Nerd terminating bad video games for your entertainment. If the cord is caught, pull the strap through until it is released.